and helps them learn their faith in a practical way. My name is Pastor Jason Moore. I'm in the studio today with Pastor Shabelli. We're very excited to be with you, our listening audience, and those online. Uh, we certainly want to encourage you to give us a call here at 800-338-7060, or join us on the chat, join the conversation. Today, we're going to be talking about the spirit of the age and how it's really uh, its influence has subtly yet intentionally and really aggressively uh, taken over uh, taken over territory in the believer's life. And uh, we're going to talk about today how to identify ways to protect our kids, ourself, and our faith in advancing in in the grace and truth of Jesus Christ, and really identifying and exposing how the world, the devil, and the flesh has subtly uh, taken over ground because of ignorance and ways that we can expose the devil and uh, proclaim the truth. So, Pastor Belli, this is going to be a great mm -hmm. broadcast. Great to have you today, sir. I was, as you were speaking, I was thinking about how Jesus addressed the religious people. He said, your father's the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He's talking to like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the hierarchy of the Jewish nation. Imagine saying that your mm. father's the devil. Like he went right for that's the religious world, and as the religious world is a source. See the world, the world is a system, cosmos. Okay, it's a system, an organized system, culture, the world, whatever it is, and it has two sources, two streams that feed into the river called the world. One stream is the old sin nature. The other stream is the devil and demons. And so they feed what's known as the world system. Did you know that, that Jesus said in his prayer in John 17, he used the word world 19 times. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Mm. Cosmos. 19 times in his prayer to his father, keep them away from the world. Keep them out of this world. And so the world because of the sources of the old sin nature, the devil and demons is trying to work its way into Christianity and come up with a Christianity that has a worldly trend to it, has, has the things of this world. Like if you look at Christian divorce now, it's not much different than the divorce that's in life itself on, with unsaved people. You look at what Christianity is kind of uh, propping up and adhering to and uh, kind of motivating people towards, it is things that are of this world. That's why you see, especially in poor countries, there's so much talk about if you're spiritual, you will have riches, you'll mm. have money. See, that's the world. And it's infiltrated its way in with the name it and claim it kind of uh, doctrines and theologies. So it's, it's just come in, it's coming in. It comes in subtly, it comes in slowly. Yes. And we, we don't see it. Like, you know, how the devil said, by the way, this started in Genesis 3, right? Hath God said, just a question, wasn't, wasn't like saying that God was a liar, wasn't saying that, uh, you know, what they were hearing. Uh, I just want to know, I want to know something from both of you, Adam and Eve, right from the beginning. Mm. Did God, can it really be, that's how it translates in Hebrew, can it really be that God has said, you shall not eat of this tree? Mm. You know, the infiltration, and, and when the enemy is infiltrating, remember, he is the God, small g, of this world. 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4. he blinds people's minds, 3.14. So what we have is a world system that is trying to work its way in through demonic activity. 1 Timothy 4.1, so in the last days, there'll be seducing spirits, planeo spirits, and doctrines that devils teach. Mm. Imagine that. You yeah. mean devils can teach doctrines? Absolutely. There are doctrines that are not at all connected to the character of God. So they're seducing spirit, same word for planets, planeos, they, they draw away, and doctrines that devils teach. And Paul is warning Timothy about this. And if you look at verses 11 through 16, you'll see how you are delivered from that. Command and teach these things. And he's talking about, he's talking about truth and doctrine and progressive thinking with God in verses 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So the way to deliverance then is the same thing as it is now. Yes. The way to deliverance for Lot was to get out and think with God. What, what are you thinking about, Lot? What's happened to you? And uh, Abraham, and, and, and it could happen 
uh, in any in any era, at any age, in, in anybody's life, in any church, it's there. And so there's this battle going on, unseen battle, uh, and seen and unseen. And so it's important for us to have an understanding of the spirit of the age and the world and what it represents mm. and what it's trying to do. And how can you how can you define it? See, the only way to define the enemy is there's two things that are very important. I submit to grace. That's James chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Verse 7 talks about resisting the devil, verse 7 and 8. And he will flee from you. You have to submit to grace. And then how did Jesus deal with the enemy in Matthew 4? It is written. It is written. It is written. It's only the word of God and the grace of God that makes the devil flee. He only flees twice in the Bible. Hmm. He flees when Jesus uses the word, and he flees in James 4 when you're submitted to grace. So the world and Christianity, if Christianity has no word and has no grace, they can be saved, born again. But there's no emphasis on the word and doctrine and truth, and there's no grace, God's nature and character. Then that kind of Christianity is just an open door for the enemy. Yes. Very simply, that yes. that is what it is. And many people maybe are aware of it. Some are not aware of it. But he's coming in, you know. He's subtle. Mm. He comes in, you know. Beware, you know, beware uh, of the enemy. This is so important and so key. Pastor Belli, I was thinking of a quote by Martin Lloyd-Jones that says it's not enough just to believe, but we must mm. have a defined theology. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people we do we talk to that say, oh, I believe in something yeah. is very abstract. But, you know, I want to I want to expose something today. I've been studying a little bit. You know, we hear this word zeitgeist, the spirit of the age, a good German word. And uh, I know we were kind of laughing earlier. I never heard of that. it. It's OK. <laughs> but I was uh, just thinking about how subtle the devil is. And mm -hmm. I was studying about Harry Potter. And that's something that maybe our listeners are very aware of. Uh, I'm learning because I have a young son and just the the wiles of the devil and in this particular book uh, and it's an incredible um, it's in, it's everywhere as far as young kids reading about it but um, think about this Harry Potter three things that it does uh, and some people say oh it's it's fiction it doesn't hurt anybody but it promotes fantasy it promotes imagination and it makes evil, innocent. It has this emphasis on Harry being the wizard and him having this, uh, this, uh, this experience and he using and learning and teaching in these books mm -hmm. how young kids from the ages of 8 to 13 or even beyond that, how to use uh, magic, spells, and wizardry. And I just want to say this quickly, because uh, some people think it's okay, some people demonize it. I just want to present it that it's definitely something, the storyline is contrary to the Bible. It actually yes. is, uh, they, they say Scholastic, the, the company Scholastic, 32 million kids read this book and it's taught in our oh. schools. <laughs> and it literally does three things. It makes e evil look innocent, it humanizes and normalizes evil, and it desensitizes the child to think, oh, magic's okay. Uh, and it teaches them how to uh, fantasize and imagine and want to cast spells. And it's really a, a, an active form of paganism that our kids are learning. And also our culture says, oh, that doesn't hurt anybody. Uh, you know, uh, in the storyline talks about shape change, uh, human sacrifice, love spells, curses. And this is really kind of our world today where um, kids are reading this and and they're like, oh, they're, this is a great story. And I've talked to Christians, oh, they, oh this is fiction. What's the big deal? <laughs> the big deal yeah. is it's influencing our kids, our own self. It's filling our minds with something contrary to the Bible. And it's something dark, it's something devilish, and it's doctrine of mm -hmm. demons. And maybe you're out there and you've your kids are reading this, and uh, I would just say this right out of the gate. As parents and as leaders, we have to study uh, and understand that the devil is not sitting on his hands. The spirit of the age is to 
distracts kids, young people, and ourselves from critical thinking, thinking with God, mm -hmm. and of course, ah, you know, 40% of Christians say, ah, the devil's not even real. 40% of Christians. Are they born again? That's a great isn't question. Isn't that a great question? 40%. And if they are born again, wow. have they been raised in and by the word? Mm. See, there's a lot of Christians, they are saved, okay? But they have no understanding of truth or the word of God. And it's, it's interesting how they can, then they can look at things and see the innocence of them. They think it's innocent, but yes. it's not. Be not ignorant. 2 Corinthians 2.11, do not be ignorant of his devices. And that word devices is interesting. His thought out procedures that are progressive with a purpose. Thought out procedures that are progressive and have a purpose of destroying the person's life is what, it, what it, it's all about. And okay, once saved, saved forever. So they can't take the person to hell. But what can happen is they can, uh, they can have the person that is born again and is going to heaven living a very earthly, worldly life mm. that has no effect on anybody else. And it's really shocking. And it's, it's something that's been around, you know, has God really said in Genesis 3? The enemy's approach to Adam and Eve was, can it really be that God said you can't eat of this tree? You mean, I can't, can, can it be that God really has said you shouldn't read that Harry Potter garbage? <laughs> no, no, really? No, that, there's, there's a question. It's like, it's the enemy putting things in front. And by the way, evil, 2 Timothy 3.13, for your uh, understanding and my understanding, evil waxes worse and worse. Yes, It's more sophisticated now than it ever was. Yes. And Romans is also the same thing, 12. The night is far spent. It means that, that the enemy and the night and the darkness is advancing. The enemy advances. And if Christians just, they're born again, but they stand still. Yes. And they don't make any progress in their life with yes. truth. The enemy's advancing and they're not. And so what they had victory over five years ago, they will lose today mm. because they haven't advanced at all. The enemy is advancing using the world system. And that's why he said, love not the world, First John 2, 15, uh, 14 and 15. Don't have a self-sacrificing love he uses the word agape. Do not have a self-sacrificing love for this world system. And it's recognizing what's of God and what's not of God. And so you have churches, and I've seen this even throughout Africa, you have churches that have taken uh, upon themselves principles of the world. You know, we, if, you, if you have money, you're spiritual. If you can do, if miracles can happen. You know, Paul had discernment. Mm. And you don't get discernment without being spirit-filled, 1 Corinthians 2, 14 through 16, and word-filled, Hebrews 5, 11 through 14. Remember when the woman, listen to this, what would you say to this? The woman says in Acts 16, these are the sons of the Most High God. They show unto you the way of salvation. Doesn't that sound good? You know what Paul said to her? Come out of her. It was a demon. No, they don't just show you the way of salvation. They are saved, and they have the way of salvation. So that's he a great recognized point. it. That's a great point. He recognized it. Do Christians mm. recognize evil? That's the point. That's it. <laughs> that's it. I would say no if you're not in a Bible believing church. Uh, I, I love the point where if we stand still, if we if we're not vigilant, First mm -hmm. Peter five seven and eight, if Ephesians two two. I mean, again, if we're not in with God's mind, if we're mm -hmm. standing still, then de uh, the devil is very sophisticated. I mean, think think about this. The spirit of the age introduces and makes uh, the spiritism, the supernaturalism, the paganism legitimate. Mm -hmm. It's legitimate. Let's accept that everyone's doing it. And uh, the problem is, where does that lead you? So if something is initiated to us, what? how are we going to think about it? Secondly, it's teaching us to manipulate our present world. A lot of mm -hmm. people want to forth tell. They want to yeah. do this hypnosis and these... Um, tarot cards because they're not satisfied with their present and they want to manipulate their future. And this is the third one. This goes back to Harry Potter. And people say, oh, what's the big deal? You know, you've got C.S. Lewis, you've got Tolkien, mm -hmm. you've got... The issue is this book, and this is a documentary I've been studying, is that literally witches, Wicca, and all of these things, which are the undercurrent, a lot of major issues in our, mm -hmm. in our nation, um, is that it teaches us it teaches the reader, young kids who are unable to discern between right and wrong, and that's another thing. Oh, there's no right and wrong. There's no, there's no absolute. It's all relativism. 
it's such a bad thing because when when we're taught or these kids are taught, they are then going to act out. And then the parents wonder why, in some cases, not all cases, why their kid's out of control, why depression is rampant, suicide, suicide in these things. I believe the spirit of the age is destructive, as we, as you mm-hmm. obviously said, John 10, 10, kill, rob, and destroy. And I would just say that we have to be super vigilant, mm-hmm. super vigilant, and we can't be neutral because the devil's not neutral. Well, isn't that what the scriptures say? Be sober, mm. have the right mind, be vigilant. For your adversary, not yes. just their adversary, your adversary, the devil walketh about seeking whom he may des- devour. I preached a message one time about the devil's a soul winner. Uh, he's roaring lion, that's his mouth. He walks about, that's his feet. He seeks with his heart, his evil heart. Hmm. He's a soul winner. He's looking to destroy. He's looking to steal. Jesus said, steal, kill, and destroy. I remember working in a prison when I had a guy who was into all of these things. And he would kind of try to follow behind me when I would give uh, people the gospel. I worked in a juvenile prison uh, for people under 18. Then I worked in a, I worked actually in three of them at the same time. I was, was ministering there too. And he just said, there's no such thing as right and wrong. There's no such thing as evil. Wow. So one day, because <clears throat> wow. we worked in a prison, we had weapons. So one day, uh, this is an interesting story. I'm sorry uh, if you have a certain view of me after I say this story. That's your problem. Let it rip. Uh, but I, <laughs> I, 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 I had, we all had, we had a gun. We had a gun to protect ourselves. So I put the gun to his head. And I said, I don't like people that look like you. A certain thing about him uh, in his uh, outward appearance. I said, I just feel like I should put a bullet through your head. He goes, you can't do that. That's horrible. That's murder. That's evil. I said, oh, mm. that's evil. Oh. You said there was no evil. He never said that again. He never mentioned that again. At the, and so people think there's nothing There's nothing wrong. And I know there are people that see crime all the time, see things happening in this world, and they would say that there's evil, but they don't know how to combat it. Yes. They, don't, they, they do not know, understand how they can go into battle and have victory. I love the two hands of the Ephesians 6 warrior. Okay? I love the What's in the two hands? a shield of faith, and the sword of the Spirit. And they work off of each other. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So the two things, you got the protected armor, helmet, you know, breastplate, loins girt about with truth, you know, whatever, but in gospel feet. But the two things that are in the hand are the sword and the shield. And this is what we need. We need God's Word and truth and doctrine and thinking with God, which produces faith. If there's no thinking with God, there's no faith. And if there's no faith, how do we go against evil? Yes. The, with, uh, with, the enemy hates the word and he hates faith. Okay? This is, these are two things that he can't stand. So he will do everything he can to keep Christians and churches away from the word of God and mixing faith with what they hear. Yes. This is what he's going to try to do. And so he wants to infiltrate what we would call the Christian culture. You know what I say? What we need as Christians? A cross culture. Yes. Finished, finished work culture. There it is. Cross culture. You know, not just going <laughs> cross culture like on missions, but have a culture that is having a foundation of the cross, the person of Christ, and the, the work of the cross, the work of, of the God man. Mm. This is what's absolutely necessary. But how easy it is for people to be seduced and swayed by good things. Well, people recognize evil. They say, oh, yeah, that person who went out and they, they shot six people someplace. That's evil, you know? Yeah, okay, but what about the evil that is in the system? Yeah, uh, what how about, they get yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's going on? <laughs> what, so schools don't teach that there's a God. Yeah. That's evil. A school that doesn't talk about Christ or God and doesn't lead you to it, Really, what's that all about? Now, you can be a Christian in that system as long as you're built up in faith, you have a good church, and you got parents that are spiritual. Yeah. I'm not saying that we shouldn't go to schools, okay? But I'm just saying recognize what it's all about. Yeah. Recognize that overall. I mean, I had all kinds of strange people, even when I was going to school in the early 60s. We had people that were so anti-God. You couldn't believe it. Mm. You know, but I remember when I was in elementary school, they would have a Bible and, and my teachers would read the Bible there. But as it progressed onward and you got into higher education and in, into high school and into university, 
no more God, mm. no more Jesus. It was all like, you know, it was, and that was, that was changing then in the sixties. Yeah. Here we are, here we are, uh, 50 years later. Yeah. And so <laughs> it's incredible. I mean, the twenties really were the beginning of it, right? The revisionism that yeah. went on, but, but think about this. I mean, C.S. Lewis wrote the Narnia series, a fantastic series. I've read through that, listened to it from a biblical worldview. But when you think about the Harry Potter, the, the author Rawlings, literally quoted her saying i you know that it was an involuntary right like she literally felt someone else wrote that book yeah. there was a definite demonic influence but but pastor i think you've really hit some important points like when we open our heart and our doors to the spirit of the age then of course we see demonic manifestation we we see destruction destructive thought patterns compulsive behavioral issues, drug use. And so when, we, uh, <laughs> when we're talking about the spirit of the, of the age, we must not play with it like in right. Job chapter 41, oh, like, are we going to play with Leviathan? But like having a biblical spiritual worldview that's, that says evil is evil mm -hmm. and uh, God is good, like Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12, 1 Samuel 15, 23, where Psalm 101, we have to rule our home mm -hmm. with diligence because we have locks on our doors. Yeah. We have locks on our windows, but then we turn the television on. And I'm not <laughs> against television. I'm not against the internet. It's being vigilant so the spirit of the age doesn't teach my kid or teach our young people, which I think is one of the most challenging generations and one of the most brilliant generations what it means to have a biblical worldview, how to have a defined mm -hmm. theology, and to and to say say what it is. The devil is seeking to devour, and this yeah. is why the church, right? And I know what I'm talking to the choir. I know people that are watching and and certainly are chatting here. Church is more important than ever before because yes. the devil is more sophisticated <laughs> and. I, 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 I heard this recently, that, that kids want power uh, to change their, their lives, and maybe they don't see the power in their parents' life, or they don't yeah. see the power in the church's life. So, of course, they're gravitating to Wicca sure, sure. and these, these underlying um, demonic practices. I saw it's scary a, stuff. Yeah, I saw a great change, like in Africa, with the advent of the television coming. When there was no television, mm. it was really interesting. Some of the things that are happening in the culture here that have been happening for decades are starting to have entered the, into other parts of the world. And, and uh, you know, all of a sudden, they're getting their moral trends based upon uh, the communication uh, and, the, and the networks and the TV and the radio and things that are, that are actually initiated and do not come from there as a source but come from other places. So what am I going to give a place to? I love Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Mm. Give no place, a topos is the word, to the devil. Don't give a place. Not It means not an inch. You, If you let his top of his finger get into your door, then the hand is in, then the arm is in, and then the body is in. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, just, you're, giving, you're giving a place. It could be something very small that it starts with. <laughs> it could be something very small, like oh, mm. who needs to go to church? more than once a week, yeah. you know, I'm saved, or who needs to read my, I mean, it's amazing to me, Pastor Jason, how even Christians today have so little knowledge of the Bible. They don't read the Bible. When the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, study, continue in the things you've learned, 2 Timothy 3.14. So I study the Bible, and I'm in a Bible-believing church, so mm -hmm. I have initiations coming on a daily basis. Daily. Yes, daily. I need, I need, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So if I do not have a, a diet of truth and the word and doctrine, then I'm going to be gravitating towards something, you know, information or yes. the, the spirit of the age, right. you know, the world system. And it's, it's amazing. Uh, it's amazing how uh, Christianity has really left off like just reading the Bible, but we should be reading the Bible, studying the Bible, meditating upon the Word of God. I'm not saying 24 hours a day. Sure. I am saying that there's a time. That, uh, is there a time in your life out there, if you're listening, that you give time for God's Word every day? That you say, this is important. This is vital. 
this is extremely necessary. Otherwise, the spirit of the age takes over. Yes. The spirit of the age takes over. It's not just sitting back, no. you know, waiting, waiting, whatnot. It's aggressive and it's motivated by demonic forces. And this is so key. How, how could we see? Look, and Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. He was the only one. Mm. I mean, the whole, the, the whole population mm. didn't care about God. In Genesis 12, it's just Abraham in the Ur of the Chaldeas. We're not talking about overwhelming multitudes of people. We're talking about just a small remnant. You know that word remnant? Like, what does that mean? That means yeah. it could be 10%. 10%. And by the way, out of 8.1 billion people on planet Earth, they are saying that there's not even 800 million Christians. There's wow. maybe 750 million. And guess what? 250 million are in China. Wow. Can you believe that? I can. They're in China. And then in Africa, there's, in Africa, there's 200 million. Wow. Okay. So to be honest with you, what's going on in our country? Some people are saying maybe out of 380, 400 million people, maybe there's 80 million born again believers. Wow. So this is getting, this is evil is waxing worse and worse. And the influence of Christianity, Bible believing Christianity, not just saved and going to church and just living like the world. That's what, that's what can happen. They are born again, mm. but they live just like the world. And there's no difference, you know, no difference is taking, there's no difference at all. And, and the young people are being raised up with a propensity towards something spiritual. Yes. But if, it, if it's not given God, if they're not given Jesus Christ, God's word, God's life, they are going to gravitate towards something else. Can I ask you, Pastor? Yeah. How would you identify evil? Let, let's say we're talking to our listening audience today. How would you identify evil in your life? And and the and the, I think a lot of consequences come from undefining those yes. things. But how would you identify yeah. evil? Let's say you're talking to a parent. Let's say you're talking to a workmate. Let's say you're talking to a businessman today where they're in the world, not of the world, or maybe the world, if we're not making an impact, we're being impacted, right? Sure, that whole principle. Sure. How would you identify evil? Yeah, first of all, I would, the definition of evil is that which is alien from and in opposition to the life of God. Mm. So what's alien, what's alien from? So parents go out, and maybe they're, they're very busy from 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock to 11 o'clock at night, and they just allow the uh, children to sit in front of the television and do whatever they want, watch whatever they want. That's evil. Wow. How's that one, right? Um, <laughs> having having no spiritual initiation in the home. There's no prayer. There's no Bible. There's not even a thought or uh, anything spoken about the Bible. That's having a place for the enemy. That's the enemy. Uh, and maybe you have Christian schools and some of their practices, they don't deal with people, with sensuality. They don't deal with lust patterns. They just allow things to go on, giving people an education, but not ever thinking about what's going on in these relationships of those people that are in the school. Mm. That's the that's evil coming in. Uh, how, can it, how about it can come into a church with music that motivates people contrary to that which is spiritual? You know, it, it's like it just isn't a spirit. It isn't spiritual or anointed and draw people to Christ. That's evil. It doesn't seem like evil. Yeah, that's evil. How about this one? Churches that do not propagate the gospel. They don't care about missions or evangelism. You want to what do you want to say? Oh, well, they're just different. No, that's evil. Mm. How about that one? That's evil. They don't care. They don't care about uh, what the Great Commission was. What not? So there's there's so many ways that evil can come in very subtly, uh, just little things, little things that can take place. I mean, I remember that there was never an option about uh, us having dinner every night with our family. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking about me and my wife and my kids, and then with my parents, you you couldn't you couldn't find an excuse <laughs> to to be not there for dinner. You know, now huh, people never eat together. I'm not saying that there can be reasons for that work and all that, but even if they're in the same house, you know, oh, I'm grabbing this sandwich. I, I'm taking my sandwich to my room, you know, whatever. Like there's, there's no, it's amazing how the attack on the family has come. Yeah. And you have all kinds of exactly. alternative, all kinds of alternative families. Yes. What people call families, you know, right. uh, women with women, men with men, they call that a family. They're adopting children. Right. And then, you know, uh, save people are told it's okay to marry an unsaved person. No, it's not. Mm. See, that's yeah. evil. Mm. That's evil 
coming in. What's wrong with you know taking a glass of wine with your supper? Evil. What's right. wrong with smoking marijuana? Evil. Mm. Right. What's wrong? I mean, like I don't, I don't, I'm not giving any money. I'm not doing this tithing thing. Evil. Mm. See, they just don't want to call it that. They just want to call it my preference. Yeah, it's anti-Christ. It's yes. anti-Bible. Yeah. It's anti-faith. Yeah. I, I think again, I, I love what you're saying because it's a progression, small increments of yes. territory lost. And and again, that First Peter five eight, it's really screaming in my mind that he is seeking. He yeah. is actively seeking. So. Like I, we get on the internet, we have filters, <laughs> we have a plan. We don't just peruse without just some mindless, uh, mindless thing. We, there's a plan because the devil is seeking whom he yeah. may devour. And it's the same thing in a church. Without the gospel, Christianity is just another philosophy. And that, yeah. that's, that's the tragedy why the church is weak. And this is why without yes. the word, without spirit-filled Christians... And we spend our time everywhere, and we come home, and the most important people in our house get the least bit of our attention. And that shouldn't be. That should yeah. change, and that should be an active, uh, intentional way, starting small, not like, okay, we're going to turn the house upside down. But no, we start small, we initiate, yeah. and we initiate things like prayer. Because without prayer, there's no discernment in the spiritual world. Without the Word, we have no power in the spiritual world. Yeah. And I, I think I'm stirred up, Pastor, about Harry Potter because I hear people, ah, it's not a big deal, you know, it's just fiction. Well, so is the uh, the manifest, the Satanic Manifesto from. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we could go through it. It's like these are influencers, yeah. and yes. if I'm gonna be Joe Schmo that has no uh, <clears throat> no idea of what's coming in my brain, it's gonna reshape my thinking. It's going to reshape my priorities. It's going to reshape my values. Sure. Got to be awake. Got to be awake. I mean, think about this. There's those things, and they are very strong and very powerful and very dangerous. How about just sitting in front of something six hours a day? Think about it. In other words, your mind is not active. Your mind is being acted on. Right. In other words, like I just, I'm just sitting there receiving, so I'm watching television. You could get a good idea by listening mm. to the news that there's violence everywhere. Yes. And it may not even occur uh, one time in your life, but you always are hearing about crime and about this and about that. News is all of the bad, evil stories that are taking place. When's the last time you heard, well, we'd like to welcome you to our newscast tonight, and we're going to start off with a, uh, a story about how <laughs> uh, two young boys that were 13 years old helped an older woman when she fell down in the snow, picked up her bags, and walked her home. That ain't news. Nobody wants to hear that. No, that's not news. What they want to hear is two young men beat up an older lady right. and stole her groceries. That's what they would call news. So we have a whole system that's so contrary to the things and the principles of God, biblical principles. Very mm. sad. Mm. And, and, and then so people allow themselves to be placed in, in front of something where it's just acting upon them. It's initiating to them. And therefore, a lot of passivity and laziness takes place because it's taking place in the mind. Yes. I'm just always, I'm always receiving from that source. I'm not receiving from God's word. I'm not receiving from the spirit. Can they go to church? Yeah, maybe once a week as a religious tradition. Oh, three times a week is too much. Why? We need to be people who are receiving with meekness the engrafted word, which can, it says, deliver our souls, James 1.21. Mm. I need to be a receiver, a constant receiver of spiritual things, godly things. And then there'll be no place for anything else. Yes. And even if it does occur, 2 Corinthians 10, 5 and 6 takes place, casting down vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And how about this? Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. How many thoughts? Some? Yeah. Everyone. Wow. Everyone. And this is, this is so important and until Christianity. And judgment begins at the house of God, by the way. 1 Peter. Is it 417? Judgment begins at the house I think of so. God. Yeah. That's where God's gonna God's gonna deal with the church first. He's not Pastor, gonna deal with the world first. I think you've quoted probably well over 35 verses in this broadcast I don't even alone. Know. But th this is the point. Knowledge is power, but what kind of power is it? Yeah. If, if I have knowledge of the world, I'm gonna be powerful in the world in my in our ambition and our lust patterns, in our 
in our egocentric yeah. self, or if we're powerful in the word, then we're going to have wisdom in the age. And I, I just, uh, we see this through First John, uh, Second John, there's so much that's going on with false teaching. And Alice Trebek yes. said this, he said the false teachers go after our kids. And so sure, sure. I want us to maybe just say, okay, let's stir ourselves up. I mean, to really identify those things that are actively uh, trying to take over our minds. So great, great comments here. Um, David Norwood, thank God we can focus on the grace hour each day and not on the delusional garbage of the world. <laughs> Eternal garbage. thanks for your faithfulness. Elizabeth, I learned when you're up against evil, God is greater than our situation. Evil, can I say, uh, evil can say the truth. Uh, okay, born again Christians can say the truth. It's our blessing. Okay, I'm not sure if I understand that clearly, but... The devil can't say the truth. They yeah. can only say right, the, the truth devil, of this world. The right. He's the a devil. liar. There's facts and then there's truth, yes. you know, and you bring up a good point. Like, again, I was, I was getting my hair cut the other day and my, my, uh, stylist said, oh, you know, she is recovering from a, a, a relationship with a, le you know, she's a lesbian. And, and unfortunately I didn't realize that until she started cutting my hair. So, but she started talking about how, oh, there's no such thing as good. There's no such thing as evil. <laughs> It's just we have to find our own truth. There's no absolutes. It's all if you're faith, if you believe true, and therefore you, what you believe, and sure. I don't believe it. This mindset is the spirit of the age. So we become, and some Christian mm -hmm. leaders say we are many gods. Yes, and that's heretical. Yeah, it's heretical, and to think that we define our own destiny, define our own truth, is exceptionally dangerous. And and this is why people are. The doctrine of demons. Yeah. They are uh, reading into the Bible. They are discounting the Bible. Or how about this? They have other pieces of literature that define the Bible. Yeah. So if I'm not sharp, if I'm not resolute, if I'm not persuaded, then I'll just kind of mosey in, which the devil is very active. Yeah. E evil is very patient, but it's very intentional. Then I could e easily be overcome if we don't have a living Absolutely. faith, a living faith. Yes. Yeah. You know. You know what's interesting to me, Pastor Jason, is that. Please, I don't know if you're gonna how you're gonna take this. What I'm gonna say right now, not you, but the audience. So many people spend so much time reading Christian books, and they don't even read the Bible. They read books about the Bible, but they don't read the Bible. I didn't mm. know there were other books that were fully inspired by God. Mm. They have great thoughts, and we have doctrine booklets, which are all Bible, okay, and whatnot. But do people read the scriptures? Do people read the scriptures, or do Good they point. read books about the scriptures, or they read commentaries and what somebody says about it? And I'm not saying that that that's wrong, but they spend more time reading books about the Bible than they spend reading the scriptures themselves. Mm. And the Bible that says, uh, "Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path." Not the not the commentaries, not the books. They can, mm. yeah, they can sometimes be a help and give us some practical application. But no time in the scriptures if the devil, and so the devil comes in very subtly with getting people to oh oh they're, uh, you know these are great books read them and they can be Christian books written by saved people, but then yeah. they develop patterns of thinking where they're just reading the books and they're not reading the Bible anymore. And that, guess what? Before you know it, they may come to a disagreement with some of those books about the Bible and then find themselves not reading those books either. And then all of a sudden, they're just into things of this world. Mm -hmm. The things of this world. And this is, this is so interesting. And you can see how even pulpits today across the world, are they bringing in thoughts from God? Or are they bringing in thoughts from the old sin nature? the world system, religious spirits, yes. you know? I mean, think about it. Religion crucified Christ. There you go. <laughs> Hello, you know what? That It's a religious system that did that. And so you look around the world, and you know how many religious people there are? There's billions, <laughs> billions of religious people. They would say they worship this, that, this, that, this, that, this God, this other God, whatever. The biggest problem is not uh, people that are anti-religion it's religious people that are contrary to christianity and the, this is very dangerous yes very dangerous it's the yeah. weapon of mass destruction yeah. if we could say yeah. you know pastor maybe uh and i feel like i'm in this group if i could say that maybe we have allowed certain things unchecked to 
come into our family or come into our circles of influence. And I would just say, we can't be helicopter parents. We can't can't manage and cannot manipulate, cannot control everything that goes on maybe with our kids. But one thing I would say to our listening audience, and I think this is echoing through our broadcast today, is engage your kid and teach them how to think, not what yeah. to think, but how to think in this sense. Like, okay, let's say, uh, you know, we could say Star Wars or we could say whatever movie. And of course, we want to be very careful. And I'm not saying that the and this is a lie. My kid can make its own decision. Hmm. That's not true. They're not emotionally mature enough and they don't know the things you know, but engage them, teach them how to think in this sense, like engage them. What is yeah. it? What's the conclusion you're coming to? Um, what is it that you uh, are learning from what you're reading and minimize those things, not shelter, <clears throat> but minimize those things that cause confusion and cause to a secular Mm -hmm. uh, worldview. And, and I, I have great talks with my kid. My kid's nine. He's a smart kid. These kids, by the way, mm -hmm. are smart. They are exposed to a whole, I mean, internet and the, um, the whole online didn't come out till 1994. I was 24 when that came mm -hmm. out. So now these kids are growing up and they know digital uh, platforms like the, the back of their hand, but engage them. Like, what is it? And then instruct them in sure. the biblical uh, the biblical truths, because I think I can say this to my own self too. We take for granted, ah, oh, they go to Sunday school. Oh, they yeah, understand. Sure, sure. They, and, and I would say this, I, we do more counseling in this office over here at pastoral care because of people watching things on YouTube that are, that are off. Like yeah. for instance, it's off to believe there's no rapture. It's off sure. to believe that the church goes through the tribulation. That is not scriptural. Right. And I'm probably going to pay for that comment too, but it's what is the biblical worldview and what is scripture right. in context? You say. shall know the truth. Yeah, the truth shall set you free. I'm, I'm, I'm stirred up yeah. today, Pastor. See, if they don't, <laughs> if we don't, and, uh. and by the way, the Bible says this: train up a child in the way that he should go, mm. and when he is old, he will not depart. It's our responsibility to train yeah. ch our children or to train young people in the Word, because if they don't know the Word, how will they understand what's right and what's wrong mm. and they and by the way the devil comes with half truth three quarter truth 90 percent truth and it seems like they're true it doesn't seem like it's a bad thing you know but what what takes place you know mm. is it's like amazing how what they're doing in some places trying to bring people to a place of having uh being less violent per se by mm. giving them certain narcotics certain drugs and saying this is okay so what we have is we have a liar see jesus <laughs> hit it right on the nail, right the nail right in the head. Your father uh, is the is the devil, and he's a liar and the murderer. See what happens when you keep believing a lie, something that's contrary to the truth. You murder spiritual life. Not not just forget about the killing part. Wow, physically, but you murder spiritual life. So here we have all kinds of things that take place in the Bible where people believed a lie. And then there is there's is no spiritual life because uh, truth will bring life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. life. It doesn't, it, it, the devil is the, the way to a lie to murder and destruction. Mm. It's as simple as that. So we have to be <laughs> very careful. We have to be very careful in our own personal lives and every church. I mean, churches today, are they scriptural? That's Are they biblical? a great question. Are they biblical? Somebody That's was telling a... me I was dealing with a problem in a co another country uh, overseas uh. today, and like they they have like they don't have one pastor teacher, they have a, a couple of men and a woman leading the church in a, in a in a, in a so called trinity of deception. I call it no. <laughs> this is wrong. This is not. This is not correct. Mm. Even to have three men leading a church, there ought to be a pastor of a church. This is, this is so key with assistant pastors, of course, uh, that are there and whatnot. But see, all of a sudden, this subtle thing comes in. What's wrong with, you know, like having a multitude of pastors? And why should somebody be the, the pastor per se? So the enemy is attacking in every direction. How about this? Like, well, you don't need to evangelize. 
Mm. It's all over the world. There's television, there's radio. People don't need to hear it. We don't need to go into villages and, and go into places that are unreached where they've never heard the gospel. Come on. You know, mm. God will make it known to them. You know what? This is another one of these subtle lies. It's compromise, yeah. isn't it, yeah, Pastor? It's That's a big word yeah. today. I, I think of um, how, again, Peter says, stir up your pure mind. Stir yeah. it up. Yeah. If my mind is full of garbage, if my mind is full of myself, like I think of this new this term, individual expressivism. It's like I am expressing, mm -hmm. I am setting my own standards. I am working in situational ethics. I am setting up my own my own parameter of how I'm going to function. And this is what's the cancer in our everyday yeah. where feelings and desire now are in the driver's seat rather than the Bible. I mean, hey, friends, join our conversation. You've been chatting here. Great. A lot of great comments. No real questions, but great comments. People seem to be really enjoying this. Elizabeth what says, are they saying? I'd rather have God himself in, the, in his Bible reveal to me truth than reading other people interpretations of the Bible. Uh, a lot of people are, amen, thank you for being stirred up. The, word need, mm. the world needs to hear this. And this is another thing. Tozier says this, A.W. Tozier, he says, is, the world needs to see a fearless church. And sure. I think, again, we can't be afraid to offend people. I think the cross is offensive, like you said earlier. We have to have a cross-centered uh, theology. And I'm not saying we're out there swinging the hammer, but we can't have a theology of apology because mm -hmm. evil— I'm going to go back yeah. to what you said. Evil is not neutral. Evil is infiltrating. It's patient. It's seeking whom it may devour. This is why sober, being awake, yep. vigilant, vigilant, don't just talk the talk, walk the talk. And uh, <clears throat> another great comment mm -hmm. here, God's biblical truth is the only truth. Satan's truth perverse, perverses the truth to become an evil lie. That's Acts 13.10. Yeah. Great perversion. Delusion, yeah. retrogression, love, these are big words. I love this, uh, Mordecai bowed not. Everybody was bowing to Haman, mm. and Haman and, and Haman hung all, all of, uh, Mordecai hung all of Haman's sons on trees. You know, he didn't just get rid of Haman, he got rid of everything else, you know. So Mordecai was just one man that would take a stand, you know, against Haman, and this is what is so important. Somebody, well, we're not in the we're in the minority, and they're going to walk all over us. You know what? I'm not letting anybody walk over me. Mm. You know what? And, and and just that's the truth, and that's the way it is. And we can see this happening with where men of God took a stand, like Luther. People took a stand, and then people followed what they were standing for, standing for truth, standing for God's life, and revealing that because this is a world that is has spiraled off. It's alien from and an opposition. See, we could say, oh, it's alien from God, but it's also opposed to God. Yes. It's alien and opposed. Yes. Okay, that's cosmos. Alien and opposed. So there's there's opposition. And what the worst thing that could happen is I don't recognize the opposition. There I don't it is. recognize that's it. a big word. I don't discern it. Yes. I don't understand because I Another don't have the mm. spirit and I don't have truth. I don't discern it. And then I, I begin to play with it. And I let it into my marriage. I let it into my family. I let it into my home. And before you know it, we've got young people that are have no ability to defend against evil. Yes. They really do not. They they haven't grown yet. And we are we are supposed to guard. We're we're, we're here we're here to guard the truth. That's that's what we're here for as parents and as pastors and as uh, leaders or people in this community. We're here so that the truth would not be compromised. Yeah, it's I mean, really amazing. sixty percent of college students lose their faith on the campus. Why? Because they're not grounded in it. You know, Pastor, I want to ask a quick question here uh, as we close here, and just to just to affirm what you're saying that really uh, we're seeing a distortion of the truth. And um, again, if I if I don't know and I'm persuaded of the truth, then I'm going to believe a lie because my feelings or desires or the popular majority will uh, be the instructor in my life. Like, I don't get marriage counseling from the television, for instance, but yeah, a lot of people yeah. do. If you don't have an active in, um, initiation, instruction, and investment in your marriage, of course the world's going to come in. Mm -hmm. People fall out of love, and they, they fall into other relationships. Mm -hmm. and why? It's, it's the spirit of the age. And that is a huge thing. Um, I want to ask this question. The spirit of the age can have such an impact upon our minds that it tends to make us feel tired. 
<laughs> weary, yeah. wishing God would hurry up and get this over with, take us home. How can a Christian stay encouraged when evil is getting stronger and stronger? By them growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you read 2 Peter 3, 16 and 17, he's, he's warning us about evil and the mm. world system. He says, but grow in the grace and in the epinosis and in the personal knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to grow. Mm. We need to grow. Churches need to grow, not numerically, first and foremost, but we need to grow spiritually, that we would be advancing spiritually. It's very easy to just remain the way we are, and, and nothing is taking place. But if evil is waxing worse and worse, and the Christian in the church is not growing, then the Christian in the church will be overcome. Yes. Very simply overcome. And we've seen that happen in certain places. I love how they have such a tremendous move of God in South Korea. Yes. Which just began to take over in the country. And as it was amazing how many believers there are in South Korea. And so uh, in, in our country, we need to be praying that God would move and that people would be open. They would have open hearts to hear God's word, God's truth, doctrine, receiving the spirit of God and being motivated that way. And not just playing church. A lot of people play church. Oh, it's Sunday morning. Let's go play churchy. Let's play churchy, churchy. <laughs> and it's got nothing to do with the word and truth. It's just playing some game, you know? It's listen, like, how about if you, I remember I went to a church one time and it was two and a half hours long, 15 minutes for the Bible and the rest was all prayer and music. I thought to myself, this church is useless. Mm. This church is, these people don't even know anything about the Bible because I spoke with them about the Bible. They couldn't even give me verses on being born again. Yeah. And it's amazing. They, that's the, here's the spirit of the age. Uh, let's allow the churches to become, they become carnal. They become worldly. Mm. There's no biblical truth. There's no preaching. There's no <laughs> teaching. Nothing's happening. Uh. It's just, and I love music, of course, and we love to pray, but is that what is the, the central aspect of a church service? Or is it line upon line, precept upon precept? The Word of God should be central in the church service. If you have a church service for an hour and a half, and you got 10 minutes of the Bible, and the rest is all nonsense. What is, what's what's and... going on with offerings? <laughs> yeah, and we love Five of course, different offerings. Offerings are biblical, and so is in prayer. But in music, you know what? But sure. What's the balance here? Yes. So your church has no truth, no word, no doctrine, nothing precise. And people go out of there, nothing's changed. Right. They're singing a tune, that's all. They got a tune they're singing and the prayer they're praying, you know, and whatnot. Uh, and an offering, their, their pockets are empty because they've been manipulated out of their money through 13 offerings in one church service. And they, there's no truth. Yeah. Truth has fallen in the streets. Absolutely. The it's fallen in the church first. <laughs> Pastor, I mean, uh, the devil is the author of confusion, yeah. but he is not confused. He knows no. exactly what no. he's doing. And I think we underestimate our prayer, our faith, our our diligence in our homes, and the devil's not going to teach my kid. If And I would say this again, if uh, and I'm kind of attacking Harry Potter here today, and it's all good, because the difference here is that we must really be very vigilant what our kid mm -hmm. is involved with, what they're reading, what they are, because sure. their mind is being developed, and as things progress and act out, um, they're because of seeds sown uh, that uh, can be even evil in some regards. So again, we're seeing uh, over and over, we're seeing the innocence of evil, the humanizing and normalizing of evil, and the desensitizing. So hmm. the, these are huge things that the spirit of the age kind of lulls the believer to, to sleep because either they're, there's just, they're bored of the word, they're bored of their marriage, they're there's yeah. like this, this restlessness inside the believer because they're not quiet, they're not getting alone with God, they don't have a vision in their life, they don't have a mission in their life, they don't have adventure in their life. They, and, and this is why yeah. active living faith is something that uh, renews our mind, renews our faith, mm -hmm. renews our heart. And, um, and when was the last time we pushed back against popular, <laughs> um, and you do it all the time, of course, but when was the last time we pushed back and said no? That doesn't glorify God. No, no, I don't care if you don't like me or not. Like not in a bombastic way, but just 
This is oh. what the truth says, because the truth sets us free every time. We have Bible every school. Time. We have Bible school in the Christian schools, and that's pushing back. Yeah, this amen. is what we're doing. We have a church. Counter-cultural. We have Bible college, and we have uh, Christian schools, and we're pushing back. And that doesn't mm. mean that you have to go to Christian school. I'm just saying we want to we want to just uh, minister to parents so that they would take control in the home, mm. that they they wouldn't be. Well, Johnny's going to, like, you know, I don't want to get Johnny upset by turning off the television set when he's watching something pornographic. Mm. You know what? Not only turn the television set off, maybe smash it with a hammer. I don't know, you know? Come on. You know? Or, or the tablet or the computer. Whatever, yeah. Like, you know, get them off those. They can't think anymore. Where's, there where's, the, is. where's the thinking? There's, There's no, no thinking. thinking, you know? No what thinking. thinking? What are you thinking, you know? Right. Yeah. And if you can't think then uh, and these what this is what happens with these kind of instruments they just kind of take away the person's ability to think mm. and they can't process thoughts and come to a conclusion and everything has to be downloaded into their brain you know mm. and what we need to do is download all that stuff out of our brain and just take in take in the word Purge. this is so key yeah, this is so key taking in God's word, yes. God's spirit, God's life, God's love, God's grace, God's authority, God's victory. And yeah. I love it. And I'm thinking about this last verse. I want to say Revelation 12, okay, 7 through 10. They overcame him. Yes. How? By the blood of the lamb, finished work of the person of Christ. Blood, finished work, lamb, person of Christ. And by the word, Bible, of their testimony, faith, and they love not their own life unto the death. God's love. It's, it's an amazing verse. It's an amazing Amen. verse. They're probably going to lose their life if they stand up for something like that. Yeah. And what are we to do? What are we to expect? Anything different? You know, mm -hmm. Pastor. Thanks so much for today. These are some great truths. I, I think greater is He that is in us than He mm -hmm. that is in the world. Anything that nothing can separate mm -hmm. us from the love of God. So today, wherever you are hearing this information, however you're taking it, I hope you're encouraged and edified that you and I, all of us, can do something today in the moment as we initiate the kingdom of God, God will give the increase. So the Bible school tonight, we have Bible school tonight from six to eight open to anybody that wants to come. It'll all be about, it'll be about the theology of grace and grace, defining grace, Galatians in grace, commended and recommended to grace, not moved from grace, grace in God's glory, what it means to be a grace man, uh, Bible verses about grace and glory. Yeah, if we're not learning the Bible, we're being educated in Come the on. world. So thank you so much for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe to the show on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Pop Podcasts, Spotify, and much more. Please be sure to join us for the next show, and God bless you.